Hey, what up, guys? We're back. Welcome to the This Is My Moment podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Mitchell. Hey, you know who I got riding shotgun. What up, fam? You know, it's another episode. Your boy K. Mitch back in shotgun again, man. Let's go to work. There ain't no stopping it. This is my moment. Uh, join the movement. We bringing people together, bringing positivity, making changes for the better. Hey, I got a cat in the, in the room with us, man, that... When I first met him, I was at a Chamber of Commerce event, KT, and we just chopped it up, man. And I was like, man, like, you know how some people just get along. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, man, we just, we just hit it you off. One of us. Yeah, <laughs> straight off the top. And I was like, you know what? You got a story? Man, he started talking to him. I was like, man, I got a podcast for you. He said, yeah. So we got him on the show. Nice. Introduce yourself to the family. What's up? What's up? Um, I'm Anthony Eads. Um, I mean, I guess something to say about me, uh, you know, I'm prior military. Dig that. I think that's kind of how we connected a little bit. You was, you know, army, I'm Navy and everything. So, um, I'm originally from Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, I got four kids, mm. uh, one daughter. She's my oldest. Mm. That's my baby. <laughs> and, and three little boys. Oh yeah. man. That's what's up. My, I tell you what, man. It was Air Force. It started with A. You oh, Air Force. It was the Air Force, yeah. Oh, uh, you, you say no. too easy. I think yeah, that's yeah. How, I thought that was like an army term. No, no. That's, <laughs> oh, I'm saying that's me oh, being no. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nah, nah, you cool with it though. But um, it was a lot going on that day. There was a lot of people, man. We was in the room. There was a lot of folks in yeah, there. Yeah, there was a lot, yeah, yeah. And, and it just happened. But appreciate you for coming out, man. And uh, let's give these people something to listen to. Facts. I researched you after you, after you said yes. And um, listen to your story and looking at all of the stuff you did, man. You've been through a lot, G, a lot. And and resiliency is something that we are big in at This Is My Moment. What's your definition of resiliency? Yeah, whenever um, – so, well, resiliency to me is just pretty much like overcoming adversity. <clears throat> yeah. I've heard that uh, word a lot growing up, especially because of – you know things that I've been through, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Yeah, but I mean, just coming out of the the tough times, like going through tough times and coming out as stronger, basically. Yeah, a lot of tough times growing up, so I definitely heard that. You know what though, KT? I think everybody, everybody had tough times. We we, we did it too. Yeah, facts. What's, what's we, a, and no strangers to tough times, <laughs> but tough times make tough people. So here we are. Dig that. So some of the stuff, some of the stuff, man, that I that I saw about you. And, and let me know if I get too deep with you, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not not knowing your mom and your dad. You know what I mean, giving up giving up rights to you. You know what I'm talking. About? Can you talk about talk about how to, as a kid, man? You know what I mean, like not really having your your, your mom now and then your pops riding on you, man. How did that how did that make you feel, G? Like where were you at, man? So it's uh, I, I was, so being older now, I've been looking at I've been looking at um ways to be able to try to tell my story, yeah. things like that. Um, but cause I'm a, it's, a, it was different for me now that I'm older mm-hmm. and I know I'm kind of like, I'm going to get to the, the yeah. answer, but it's like now that I'm older now, right. I look back at, at not having my mom or dad around mm-hmm. and crazy how it sounds. It, it hurts and it's hard now. And it was then, but it's also kind of like I, I try to look at it as a blessing in a way. Mm. Um, and I'll get to the story and everything because it's more of like if I would have went the route that I was going with them, I could have ended up somewhere else. Yeah. I feel like I'm successful and I'm doing pretty well now. Yeah. And it's all because of the road I went mm. and, and everything that happened that got me to where I'm at now, where I'm going out in the future. Yeah. So it's like, it's when people ask me that, I don't like, I don't like give them a soft story. Like, oh man, I was depressed. I was angry and stuff because it's, it's crazy. Cause I was actually the opposite. Yeah. It's weird. So, um, like growing up, obviously, uh, my mom was out of the picture as a baby. So I never knew she was around. So like growing up, it's hard for me to say how I felt. Cause it was normal. In, uh, in a yeah. sense. I had my grandma. what you never had type deal. Right. Yeah. Like I'm growing up, I had my, fortunately I had my grandparents there, like my grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Um, so that was just a normal routine and my dad was in and out. Um, uh, at the time, I think I was like eight or nine when I was, uh, when I got uh, a chance to live with my dad again. So I kind of had a few years with him, like him alone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with uh, <clears throat> not going into do t- uh, too much detail, yeah. the full story. Uh, he got remarried. 
Um, she had three kids of her own. Yeah. Um, it was me and my brother. So it was me and my brother and my dad. Yeah. And he, you know, got remarried. So we he had a mixed family of five of us. Uh, and that was through the age. I, I want to say eight. It was like eight to like 12 ish yeah. or something. So about like five years. Um, I think she had like a sole mission of uh, trying to just get my dad, you know, not the best times with the stepmom type thing yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So like, I think the sole mission was to kind of get me and my brother out of the house or yeah. I don't know how, however. Right. So, um, we ended up getting, um, you know, placed in a group home oh, when wow. I was 12 because we were presented as a problem child, like a kid with anger, kid yeah. with like all these kind of issues. <clears throat> we need to go get counseling, things like that. Like I said, it's a, it's a crazy story, which maybe for like another time, but, yeah. um, Again, I'm explaining it because to me, it's like these things are happening for a reason. Because yeah. if I would have grew up in that kind of environment for a long time, I probably would have been messed up. So yeah. for me, it's like God's looking out for me. Yeah. You know, like, hey, we need to find a way to get them out. So uh, we got put in a group home. Yeah. Um, I was in a group home maybe for like a year, year and a half. Uh, and then one day, because um, it was a group home where we had counseling and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then one day, uh, my... <clears throat> um, uh, counselor said that my dad and my stepmom was there. We were having like a family counsel session, but it was off because that wasn't a normal routine. Yeah. Uh, basically, we get there. Uh, long story short, our dad kind of like talks to me and my brother. I don't remember exactly everything was said, but the the gist of it is that he was he was telling us that he was giving up his rights in the sense of at that moment I was thirteen at the time. Wow. That moment <clears throat> we were going to be living. We were going to award of the state. We we're going to be wow. you know with the state. So it's it is a wow moment, but this is where I'm kind of like the fork I was in the different. road. Really. Yeah, to me, I was 13, and it's like anybody can be like, "Man, what the heck," you know. But to this day, I'm still kind of like, because like I said, we'll get to it. I have four kids, and I would never do that. But yeah, yeah. going back then, <clears throat> it's kind of like it's kind of like you know, I don't know what was going on in his life, yeah. or whatever. So um, I saw it as you know, I was trying to be optimistic, I guess, and kind of just moved on. There's a lot of times as you know, I always hit hard times growing up, you yeah. know, because you never, you know, I don't have my dad, don't have my mom, but yeah. I try to take advantage of of the moment, being able to just be optimistic of it. Yeah. I had a lot of support system in the sense of I was in a group home, but I had staff members and stuff that would yeah. look after me. Yeah. They were actually kind of shocked too, though, because I think like three months later after the, getting the news, mm -hmm. I had to sit down with my counselor at the time, and he even told me, a 13-year-old, like he was like, man, P, uh, I used to go by PJ, by the way. That's a whole nother story. But <laughs> he used to call me PJ. So they would be like, PJ, uh, I'm not even going to lie. You, you, The way you're behaving after hearing that news, we would have never thought. Like everybody was expecting like, yeah. hey, we're going to have to look out for him because that's like hard news. But it was yeah. just the opposite. And I think that's just kind of like how I've been able to be so successful today and how, yeah. you know, I'm not perfect or whatever, but I think I've been able to take advantage of yeah. um, just whatever's presented to me. Do you feel like in that moment, did you feel like a sense of relief? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the crazy thing. Like, honestly, in that moment, I felt relief. And I think it's just because in the back of my head, I knew what you I knew was, what you dealing was dealing with. with. Yeah, 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 at home. And I didn't want to go back to that. I could definitely see that. Most people would be like, what? But when you in a situation, yeah. a lot of times it takes you to, like, kind of get out of it a little bit to, like, kind of see it from a wider lens, so to yeah. speak. But I could definitely see how that could be like a at least I ain't got to go back. You feel me? Yeah. I think too, man. As a as a parent, <clears throat> and then having step parents like growing up, I had yeah, step parents yeah, yeah. too, Facts. and it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And 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 even though they have kids, you not they kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they may be a great parent to their kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then to you. It, it, it could be the other way around. But I, this is what I, I've always said, and I stand on this. If I marry her, I marry you. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And that's the way that's the way I rock. Yeah. If if you get married and you want the wife or you want the, 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 the husband or whatever you want, and they got kids. Yeah, I, it's a package deal, for sure. For sure. And yeah. if you can't accept the children, it ain't no way on earth you can accept me. I'm sorry. It ain't gonna never work. It, it's it's real always life gonna because, be animosity. Yeah, because if you were, you were in that situation, like the one parent that that is their kid, that 
that's always gonna be that kid. And they ain't gonna. I just don't think that a, that has never been a situation where the step parent is not, you know, what I'm saying, accepting of the child, and then the actual relationship work. I just that just don't make sense. I don't. I don't know, man. But and, and they're they're divorced today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was thinking hey, that when you said there that. There you go. So it's kinda, it. Yeah, it's kind of like that relationship to even work in itself. So it will never. Like, it never will. It's so much, man. It's and and kids, man, and people say that and. Some people put their kids before their spouse, and some people put their spouse before their kids, and things of that nature, man. And for me, I love my kids and my wife equally. I like I would die for my kids and my wife. It ain't no way around it. And I couldn't see myself having to choose, yeah, between the two. Like I couldn't give my kids up for my wife, and I couldn't give my wife up for my kids. Like. Whatever it is, I'm just gonna have to be miserable. We just gonna be miserable. Yeah, yeah, gonna be. We gonna be here. <laughs> and we gonna be the happy, most miserable people that, that on the earth. Cause we ain't. I'm, I can't rock without you. Cause yeah. I can't be myself when I'm not there. But you did bring up something that I wanted to touch on. You talked about self doubt, man. And, mm-hmm. and for us, man, self doubt. And a while back, I had a guy tell me, "You change the root, you change the fruit." So that means you change your mindset, you change the way you look at it, you can change the outcome. When you were Having those times, man, you was going through those times, man. How did you stay positive as a thirteen year old kid? Stay positive after something like that. You had to be uh, uh, older than thirteen <laughs> yeah. mentally. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you had that's to, the, uh, what they call it—the emotional maturity. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, a, yeah. of a grown yeah. dude. For real. How did you stay positive, man? How, what was your mindset at? And, and looking at it from where you are now, where were you at? Ooh, man, that's like it's just that's just hard to explain. I don't know if that goes deeper into just like DNA yeah. built up, having you know, <clears throat> having the support system on my side too, because mm. it wasn't just me. Yeah, um, like uh, the group homes that I, I lived in, I there was a lot of good people there, mm-hmm. good people around me that I guess a lot of them really wanted to see me succeed. Yeah, you know, even kept uh, kept me in church and mm. everything. So I always, you know, um, thank God for a lot of things too. Because there's a lot of stuff that was out of my control. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think it was just kind. Of, I think it's just kind of it's just how I'm built. Yeah. Like how the kids say we built. <laughs> built yeah, but yeah. I, I think, but in a sense, it's true because I think it's just like because there's a lot of kids that go through what I go through in the group homes that don't make it like me. Yeah. yeah. So it's right. kind of it could be like I'm built different because yeah. sometimes I'm just like I don't even know. Sometimes I'm just optimistic. I'm a yeah. happy person. I try to just like live life like that being optimistic so yeah i think at the time that's just pretty much was it what what it was yeah um did it you know did i do i have doubt yeah sometimes i'll doubt myself with certain things like just because you know i don't i'll, I'll compare i find myself comparing myself to others which yeah. will, will cause doubt mm-hmm. you know other people that have support of their mom and dad and things like yeah. that and i feel like man y'all got it easy or whatever y'all can whatever yeah or something like that but once i start com- when i <clears throat> once i stop comparing myself to others yeah. and realize that I, i've made it through tough times i can still do it then yeah. i'll it'll help me with my doubt yeah, kind of walk it back yeah i got a question that i ask people <laughs> that have been through difficult situations especially as a youth like early on in life like as you after you know what i'm saying as an adult, have you ever went back like to therapy or talked to somebody about things that have happened to you as a oh, yeah. youth? Yeah. To, yeah, to this day. Um, I tell people all the time, even my brother, he went in counseling because, I mean, I grew up a whole life in counseling. So for me, I'm, I don't know if I'm biased, but I don't, I don't, I even went to uh, college, studied psychology and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I always feel like counseling is a good, I mean, it doesn't even have to be, I, <laughs> I feel like counseling is good with a, a person who, uh, if that's their profession. Doesn't like have that's to what be they formal. study and stuff, but it yeah. doesn't always have to be like that. Yeah. Like my pops to this day, and I know we'll get to that. I say my pops because that's my foster dad. So I had that's lived in group homes and stuff, but when I was 17, um, one of the staff members that I lived with at the group home introduced me to this guy that fostered child and or foster kids, and he thought that would be a good fit. And uh, rest in peace. His name is Austin. He was yeah. like basically he would be like my godfather to today. Yeah. Um, but he definitely knew he definitely knew it because once I introduced to Pops, his name is Glenn Walker. To this day, me and him, um, me and him are tight. Yeah. You know what? Before we go on far, man, shout out to Group Homes that's actually putting kids on the right path, man. Yeah, for sure. Cause shout I- out to you guys, man, because it it takes it takes a big person to understand that these 
kids are, and I hate to say it like this, but kids are the future. And they do, and to do the right thing by the kids, because I ain't gonna lie, when I was in high school, we had uh, we had people that used to get the foster kids, and they used to do it for the money. Yeah. And you can tell they do it for the money, because they kids being J's, Polo down, foster kids being Walmart clothes. It's like, bro, in the same household. And the foster kids is the reason why y'all got the bread. A hundred percent. And I just want to touch on that because I know I was talking about my pops and Walker, the opposite of that. Hands down. Like he, he fostered kids. Um, there were, he fostered quite a few. And honestly, he was kind of, he was like torn of fostering me one because I was already older. Mm -hmm. I was 17 and he had prior like uh, situations where it was tough. And he was like, man, I don't know if I want to take on another one. Yeah. Yes. But my my guy, <clears throat> Austin, was telling him, like, nah, this guy got his head on straight. Like, he's good. Yeah. So he took the chance. And we've been, we've been close since then. But when I was there, like, he any money that he – because he, uh, he was Air Force, too. Yeah. He was Air Force, uh, retired. So he, he made money. He didn't yeah. need to foster. He just – he made money. So all his foster or money he made from foster care, or whatever, went back to us. That's and the so. two other two other kids that I lived with when I was with him, he actually adopted them. Oh, he was going to adopt me. Well, he asked. I actually told him no, and he was cool. But I told him no because I was already seventeen. Yeah, and it I was wasn't older. no point. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of we kind of like came to that senses or whatever. Because you, you can only adopt somebody before they're eighteen, right? I, I yeah, I would say so, but I don't know. But yeah, um, there is a lot of people. I hear all the time a lot of foster parents that are like that though that what yeah. you were saying, but he he was definitely opposite. And That's what's up. Is he man. still living? The guy that the, oh yeah, what's his name? Uh, Glenn Walker. Glenn Walker, man, shout out for doing <laughs> yeah, the right thing for real, G. for real. You 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 created a monster over here, man. He he's all right with me. So shout out, Glenn, man. Yeah, That's what's up. Sure. Uh, what you got going on in your life right now, man? Trying to make it every day. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of marketing and stuff. So. Uh, currently right now I'm an insurance agent as far as like work goes. Yeah. So I got out of the Navy back in 2020. Immediately, immediately after I got out, I went and worked with Wells Fargo as a mm. mortgage, uh, loan officer. Yeah. Never did sales mortgage or nothing like that. But I mean, I kind of, I guess I just found my way after the military right away. Yeah. So, um, I had did that for three years. Uh, and then, well, so then they started letting people go cause yeah. That's when the market was doing well, and then it went up and rain everything. They couldn't afford. We weren't bringing business or whatever. Yeah. So after that, I transitioned over into the insurance. I went and got my insurance license, yeah. <clears throat> which is actually that's why I was there at the Chamber of Commerce because I know that's like a networking event, mm -hmm. or whatever. So I'm like trying to pass out my cards. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. It's just insurance. If you need home, auto, life, all that, that's what I'm trying to do. I got you. Man, I got a I got a question that me and my friends we talk about all the time. So that you've been in insurance, can you tell the people how to use your insurance like a bank? Because oh, I've been like seeing that. Is that real? Yeah, uh, yeah, you can. It's like the life. So the life insurance, There's like whole like life policy, right? Whole life policy, yeah, yeah, yeah. cash value stuff like that. IULs, IULs, and whole life they build cash value. So if you're looking to like, a lot of people will use those. For one, having the benefit of the life policy in general, yeah. protected, but because it builds cash value, you people will use that for like investments or businesses. And yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So you, you, there are those. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Man, I gotta do <clears throat> yeah. some deep digging in that, man. And it's funny you say that because before I was in insurance, I was seeing things like that too, like yeah, on like on TikTok and stuff. I was yeah, like, yeah. Man. I said I started digging into <laughs> it, but now. Now as an agent, I'm definitely trying to learn more. About yeah, yeah, it. yeah, for sure. Yeah, financial literacy is the way, man. Because I feel like that's the difference between the people that really got it and the people that don't. The 100%. people that really got it just understand the yeah. the market better. For oh, sure. Yeah. Years ago, years ago, we got into it. Yeah, got, <laughs> me and Heather got one, <clears throat> and it's a, it's the cash value every month we put into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it and it gains or it it doesn't lose, but it gains depending on how the market goes and whatever. And um. I am a huge advocate of it because a lot of people <clears throat> misunderstand the, the the military. Financially, you ain't going to be great financially, like straight up cash. Like liquid, yeah. But the military does give you insurance and, and, and housing and things like that to make up for that difference. To supplement it, yeah. But when it comes down to just straight cash, you have to utilize the bit that they give you, and the way that you you utilize it is by learning. And we had a, I had an old cat man, old sergeant, right? He used to talk to us, man. Mitchell, 
<laughs> what are you gonna do when you get out? That's how you talk to me. Hey, so man, I'm a, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm retired. You ever thought about doing this? <clears throat> I'm like, man, I don't know nothing about no money because my parents didn't know about like that's why I'm here. Life is you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We ain't have nothing. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so he got me a financial advisor. Mm. I, I have a, I had a financial advisor since 2004 to to put me on game about putting my money here, putting my money there. And one of the things that he did, he told me about the, the life insurance and not just using it when you die. Yeah. Taking some yeah. of the money out. that's what people understand yeah, yeah. it is for. I'm going to get life insurance, so <clears throat> when I die, nobody is you burdened do, with my... Yeah. You ain't got to do no yeah. fish fry. You ain't got to sell no plates. <laughs> sell no plates. You, my... you were younger, too, right? Yeah, I was young. I was, what, See, 2000, 2002... That's what, 22 years ago that put me at uh like 25? 25. Oh, I said so that's good. It's 25. Because there's a lot of people don't, like, the younger you are, the better. Because yeah. obviously the younger you're healthier. They, yeah, they give you more money because of your health. Yeah. But you know you know what else, though? Guess what I, guess what I put on it? My kids. So when my kids got their own little thing. Mm. You oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, so you yeah, set yeah, them yeah, up yeah. with one, too. For the same thing. So this is the thing. A, a lot of times you're in those industries and you know it because you're in it. Yeah. But if you wasn't in it, you think life insurance yeah. was just like there. Yeah, so we and my family ain't got to sell a place, man. Good. And I like that too, man, because keep putting that information out there. Guys, we're going we gonna to put Anthony's information on the on the bottom at the, at the at the end of the episode, man. Shoot shoot him a line if you want to learn more, man. Now, don't back away if the family come to you, though. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no. I learn, yeah, I learn every day. I always read. Yeah. I always try to, yeah. And expand my knowledge. I dig that. You said you have four kids. Yes, sir. And you working trying to be the best you can be. What's your work life balance, man? <laughs> How are you making time to learn all this stuff <laughs> and, and and get with them kids, man? Because I got so, one. That's a, I don't know how you do. That's a that's a good question. Well, I, I'll explain this. Okay, so I I do have four kids mm -hmm. without going out um, into detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three uh, so different different mothers. Yeah, yeah. So the three um, boys live in Oklahoma. Okay, okay. Um, but my daughter, mm -hmm. I have custody of her. Okay. So I live with her. Okay. Or she lives with me. Sometimes I live with her. She's, she's I, got a, I, got a, I was about to say, my five-year-old, definitely we live yeah, with her right. for sure. Like, uh, even still, like, 10 years in the Navy, mm -hmm. I missed out on a lot of a lot of times and yeah. stuff like that yeah. with the family. Yeah. And obviously, we talked about how I was raised and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of a big thing for me, like yeah. making sure I'm involved, making sure I'm there and stuff, because I don't want to be distant. I don't want to be like, like yeah. what I've used to. You're right. So my way of doing it is... My you know family comes first. Mm -hmm. My daughter and any, any of that time comes first, yeah. and then the sec work comes second. Yeah, like I make that standard across the board, like uh -huh. hands down. Military took me away for so long that now yeah. it's just like, and I think what helps me be able to do that is because I'm I'm good at what I do when mm. I whatever I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Like I go 150 percent at it. I learn it. I learn quick. Yeah. Um. Like at Wells Fargo, mortgage loan officer, didn't know nothing about real estate or sales. Within like seven, eight months, I was the trainer. I'm mm, training yeah. new hires. Yeah. So I learn quick and I try to put forth effort. Yeah. That's why it's like, even with this insurance, I'm barely in it, but I'm saying like, I'll, I'll learn it yeah. quick and I'll be like, once the times go. But I think that helps because when I am focused on work, I put so much effort and I'm good at what I do that it allows me to be like, okay, when I'm done, I'm, I'm going to family now. Like yeah. I'll be, I'm able to be successful with work and then go to my family. So, yeah. I mean, that's the best way I can put that. You know what? So I was, <clears throat> I was looking at you and I saw and Correct me if I'm wrong. I saw your daughter hooked. Oh yeah. Did your daughter hoop? <laughs> yeah. She get it from me. I want to say, <laughs> I tried to go plow playing basketball earlier today too, but yeah, yeah. I'm not the fastest. I ain't never been the fastest. I ain't but he get it done. I, know, but, hey, <laughs> I, 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 I can shoot though. People used to uh, call me like Clay Thompson. Or yeah. Like yeah. Like that, I know, right? but, Cause I can shoot, but I can't, I can't move like that, but she balls, but she balls. She though. She's a little baller. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What kind of parent are you, man? When you out there, you yeah, see you your baby. in the stands. Ah! No. Is that bad? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm actually the opposite. It's funny you say that. I'm the opposite. I, when I'm out there, I'm not I'm not like screaming. I'm like watching it. And yeah. I'm, I'm more of the like, I'll let her play. And then when it's done, then I go talk to her. Yeah, you give it the I'm tips like, afterwards. I'm like, man, like, you did this. This is what you need to do or the tips afterwards. Because yeah, yeah. 
I've always been that kind of person. Like when I'm out there yelling, I'm like either one, they, they're not going to, they're not hearing me. And really, to be honest, because I play basketball, even though I'm not like, I play at LA fitness, but I still get competitive. I'm yeah, not yeah. worrying about all that. I'm trying to be focused. And so if I want her to really listen to me, the feedback that I'm giving, yeah. I got to do it at a different, <clears throat> in a, at a after. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. honestly, like I got to trust the coach and stuff too. Yeah, so I'm not that like, you know, I'll leave that. It's fun. I like it. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun when people do it. I'll, I'll, I'll laugh and I'll be at there, but I'm not the one that does that now. Yeah. I'm going to agree to disagree with you. <laughs> so I used to coach, I coached girls okay. basketball, won a state championship, coach of the year. I was pretty good. And don't forget it. Please don't forget <laughs> it. Hey, okay. But they do hear you. 100%. Okay. They do hear you. And I, I used to tell my parents all the time, make sure that what you're saying is positive. Because once you start getting on the rest and your kids hear you, guess what they're going to start doing? Whining about calls. Whining about calls. That's true. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the coach hears all you say. All you say. I used to tell my kids just like this here. If you turn around and you listening and talking to your parents, you might want well to take your jersey off. And go sit up there with them. Because we don't need you down here because you ain't paying attention. So remember that too because they do hear you. I can, I can guarantee you. That, that that when when her daddy talk, <laughs> she she she'll hear you, she G. Listen. So good for you for 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 not being that that parent. They out there, brother. Yeah, they are, and they, they loud. out there. <laughs> I enjoyed this, and I'm glad you came, man, and, and and I'm glad that you being there for your kids, and I and I think you had a, a great experience on what not to be. Yeah. So k- kudos to you, G. Sometimes them the best lessons to have is what not to do. <laughs> That's how oh, yeah, that teach yeah. you better than what to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, right. like even in work, right? Like, yeah. the boss, like they said, you can always learn from somebody if they're not teaching you what to do, like pay attention to the bosses and learn what to not to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that is true. At the end of every show, KT, we like to play a game. Yes, and right. this ain't going to be no different. <laughs> Anthony, we play this game. It's called Pick One. Pick One? Pick okay. One. I'm going to give you two options. I'm going to give you okay. a little phrase or something. You tell me what you think. But no bailing out. You got to choose. You ready? Okay. Let's rock. Mid range or the deep ball when you're hooping? Yeah, <laughs> deep ball. <laughs> <laughs> Chicks love hey, deep ball. Going with three, huh? Hey, no, nah, I'll pull up for half court if I'm feeling it. Like I said, because, <laughs> hey, if I'm on, I'm on. So I'm pulling up. <laughs> My, I knew it too. Uh, hey, you I, don't just look like Clay, you shoot like Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up. You have yeah. one thing to tell your younger self. One thing to tell your younger self. What do you tell yourself? Keep pressing on. Yeah. I guess because that's all you can do. Life goes on. So you just got to keep, keep, and you know, just keep moving forward. Um, keep trying to educate yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get, oh, you know what? Stuff that I'm learning now yeah. after the military, being in real estate and stuff like that. Something I would have told my younger self. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I had to think about that for a second. Inve- invest and stuff like mm, that. Uh. To be honest with you, like if I was, if I would have known, a lot of the stuff that I know now when it comes to real estate, investment, things like that, yeah. I don't even know if I'm sure that I would have been in the military. Mm. I would have been focused on doing those kind of things, yeah. sa- saving up to to buy property, invest in property and things like that. Yeah. Because we don't think about it when we're young. So that's yeah. why yeah. I'm telling my younger self, like I'm setting myself up for the future. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big way. And it's an easy way too. Yeah. So if I would say, I would say, I would tell my younger self to, to go get knowledgeable on how to invest in property mm. and things like that. That's one. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Man. Sure. I'm Life changing. It's this thing called Apple. I ought to put a couple dollars in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even hear about it. I didn't even know anything about like that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm on an app called Robinhood, and there's yeah. other oh, investment yeah. apps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even know about that until yeah. after the military. Yeah, man, same. if I was on game before, I mean, <laughs> I've been, like, doing numbers about, man, if I put this much yeah, in yeah. since I was this, yeah. and then when, the, like, everything started skyrocketing, yeah. like Dogecoin and all that, yeah. I've been like, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, true. like, I It's just information yeah. is the is the difference, for real. You, you know what? Before I ask this last question, here's the thing, too, man. We didn't know because the people that was teaching us, didn't nine know. times out of ten, didn't know. Mm-hmm. You had to learn... By changing your circle, right? Facts. Putting people around you that do the things that you're trying to do. Man. So, yeah, man, I'll yeah. tell my my younger self, hey, this thing called Apple, put you about a, uh, put you about a stack on it. Mm. You'll thank me later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or Amazon or something. Yeah, because yeah, they thank all me blew later. up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Last one. I give you the phrase, this is my moment. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? This is my moment. 
Like for real, what came to my mind? Right now, go the lose yourself song by Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> I say what? <laughs> the, I didn't hear it. The <laughs> lose yourself song by Eminem. The, this is my moment. On, you know, the, the lose yourself song. Eminem from A. Mile. Eminem, man, I don't know the song. You gotta lose yourself. What? Is no, this? <laughs> that's the first thing that came to mind, though. Hey, hey, that's too. That's cool too. Sometimes you, <laughs> hey, sometimes you, sometimes man, you gotta do. It. I ain't never, heard, I ain't never heard it. Man, tell us you old without telling us you ain't I old. <laughs> <laughs> they got a chop the screw version. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm sure they do. Oh yeah, like he said, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Nah. That's too funny. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's cool. Anthony, man, do you uh, let the people know where they can reach out to you, man? You got social medias or websites or anything where they can reach out to you? Yep, I do. I got social media. I got um, uh, Facebook. You can just look me up, Anthony Eads. Uh, I got Instagram. I got my personal business. Uh, it'll be on the thing, right? Yeah. So I got my uh, my insurance page and then my personal. Uh, I got the LinkedIn. Most of all my stuff, you can look me up at Anthony Eads. Eads is not a common last name so you should be coming up and you'll, you'll just see this <laughs> the smile on there yeah you'll know it's me looking like when you, see, <laughs> when you see the clay that ain't clay you know you made yeah. it yeah but yeah 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 uh, uh all platforms I, i'm trying to get better at tiktok i got a tiktok it'll be on there oh, i so just posted dancing? a video <laughs> no i can't dance i ain't got no i ain't got no i try to dance but no i can't i ain't got no <laughs> i can't dance at all that's yeah. cool, man. We appreciate you coming by, man. It's been a pleasure, Anthony. Your story has been great, and the family, I'm sure, is going to appreciate it. Y'all leave comments, stories in the comments, man. Hit us up. Let us know how y'all think about Anthony. Go follow him on all his pages. Till next time. Anthony, we appreciate everything you did. Let me close up. We'll get right back to it. Hey, guys, he said something that, that I'm 100% behind. You can see what you don't want to be by the people that be in your life. Be what you want to be. Be the person to the people that mean the most to you. Write the story the way that you want it to read. And then at the end of the day, KT, what we going to do? Go get it! Join the movement. We bringing people together. Bringing positivity. Making changes for the better. Because it's all about growth. All about success. We want to see you rise. Want to see you.